Lead the way. Get your rock off my map. This is amazing! Let's do this. What is up, guys? It is Dylan Lepore here, and this is my first podcast here at RadioFreeRadford.com. <sighs> In case you guys didn't know, I do another podcast called the Monday Morning PlayStation Podcast, and I'm doing this at Radford. So, again... In case you didn't know, I'm Dylan Laporte, and this is the Thursday Afternoon Games Chat. And yes, that is the name I've came up with so far. Each and every week I come up to give you an in-depth talk about the games I play and some history about them. The podcast airs live on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on RadioFreeRadford.com. And then a week later, it's releasing on YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash Dylan Lepore and other podcasting services like SoundCloud and iTunes as a downloadable MP3. And thanks for tuning in. Today's gameplay is, uh, it's about you know, games and Destiny. <laughs> so today's first game is about uh, Destiny. Uh, and this is not Destiny 2, but the original Destiny that came out in, uh, you know, uh, uh, 2014, uh, somewhere September 2014-ish. And that is, uh, it was uh, a pretty well received game at the conventions like e3 and pax and uh stuff like that and let's let's see here it received numerous rewards over its time uh with a bafta award for best game at uh the 2014 british academy video game awards it was a game raiders 2014 game of the year and uh on uh, day one of its release, it sold over 500, 500 million at retail, making it the biggest new franchise launch of all time. But let me uh, give you a little bit insights on, uh, since I wanted to dive into a little bit of history. This is kind of different uh, for what I normally do, but uh, this is a little bit of history of a little bit of the games and a little bit of the corporations that surround it so Activision is one of the companies uh, that uh, helps make destiny and Activision <laughs> Activision man what not to say about them Activision has made Call of Duty Skylanders Guitar Hero Pitfall Atari games Activision has been around for years uh, years since exactly October 1st 1979 and was the world's first independent developer and distributor of video games for gaming consoles it first its first products were cartridges for the Atari 2600 video game console system published from July 1980 from the US market and from August 1981 from the international market uh, UK and They've been, uh, I don't know, I don't know, some distributing issues with the game and some licenses. A lot of people quit, uh, left Bungie, uh, mostly because of Activision and different views they signed on to and different changes. And people just didn't agree with how that worked because uh, usually Bungie is a, a more relaxed uh, video game company. They, uh, they're more laid back, even though they're uh, in Seattle, Washington. Uh, they're usually laid back and uh, pretty chill about uh, what they make and what they do there. Uh, but Activision brought in uh, microtransactions, uh, which was a big uh, no-no. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, they wanted to find a way to uh, uh, make more money so the game would last longer and more profit for Activision, of course. Uh, but... Uh, we're not here to talk about Activision. That was a brief history of Activision. Uh, let's talk about Bungie and the makers, the makers of uh, Destiny, uh, freaking Halo, uh, Myth. If you ever played the computer game Myth, uh, you're really, you're truly missing out on a very uh, medieval uh, magic kind of 
really, I don't know, horror-ish game. Uh, very dark game, and it's very, very <laughs> good. I played it a ton uh, when I was uh, little, and I can't, I, I couldn't stop playing it. It was, uh, sorry for the noise outside, there's a guy cutting the tree, uh, cutting a tree, uh, but myth is just it got me addicted uh, to it's one of the games that like i can like really remember from my childhood of uh when i was <laughs> so freaking young i played a pc uh, game boy uh the playstation was like my actual first console i ever got into uh we'll talk about more games related to those systems as the podcasts as each thursday passed and it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a fun time but Bungie and Myth, uh, Myth was like my first introduction to Bungie. I didn't even know it was Bungie. I was like, this is just a great game. And <laughs> surprisingly, it uh, was uh, Bungie. But Halo, uh, I never... Now, lots of people have differing opinions about Halo now since uh, Microsoft has been doing uh, different things with Halo. Uh, but I never really got into Halo. Like, my brother played Halo a ton, my dad played Halo a ton, I'd be over on my PlayStation playing, uh, freaking <laughs> Spyro, uh, uh, Spyro the Dragon and, uh, stuff like that, I was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, none of you guys want to play with me? <laughs> oh, God, it was, uh, it was great times, but, uh, uh, I always enjoyed, uh, uh, sitting in front of them and, uh, watching them play Halo, you know, I really didn't, didn't have an interest in playing that type of game, but there's never going to be that type of couch co-op there used to be before. That local couch co-op that was always uh, fun. You have those uh, giant land parties. People still have land parties, but uh, uh, not at not like that as much anymore. Which uh, used to be a ton, a ton of fun. But Destiny. So Destiny, when it first came out, its story was pretty bad uh most of it was uh pretty bad the writing was pretty bad everything about it was almost pretty bad but there was something that uh got me stuck playing it and it was usually i don't i don't want to say it's an addiction but addiction to the grind uh, is a different word <laughs> sounds horrible uh but it's different words i would use but that grind wanting to get better gear uh, wanting to get better guns because their guns were one of the big part just like uh, Ratchet and Clank uh, the guns are a big part of what Destiny is and uh, still is about they had a uh, randomization of the guns so you could constantly get the same gun over and over again but you'll never likely get that exactly same gun uh, which was uh, really cool so you can mess around with perks and see what can lift up the gun and there's a whole bunch of wikis online and a uh, bunch of resources that these amazing people created with uh, source codes and uh, stuff like that uh, that uh, and I think Bungie has a open source code they can they people can use for their websites for uh, access to the vault and changing stuff around and uh, finding uh, making maps for people uh, when Bun when the original Destiny didn't have a map they do have a map now in Destiny 2 but it's not it's still it's still great it's, I love that they still have a map but it's not as intuitive as I would like it to be but it's still a map none <laughs> the less but as we go on uh yeah, first impressions uh, were, like, this game, it was awesome. It was very awesome at first. When I, I can remember when I first jumped into it, when I was playing the alpha, I got the alpha code from a friend. Uh, he, I think the original deal was if you pre-order it, you'll get, like, four alpha codes. And I got an alpha code. And he uh, uh, sent one over to me. And when I first dived into it after the hours of hours of, loading the game uh when i first dived into it i was like oh my god this was 2014 i'm saying so the playstation 4 i had the playstation 4 for a couple months now uh maybe uh six months ish and uh <laughs> when i first dived into it i was like oh my god God, I never seen anything like this before. It was insane how beautiful the game was. The graphics were amazing. The skybox was incredible. And now I look at it, I was like, yeah, 
I've seen it before. I was like, I've seen it for hours constantly, but <laughs> I can never have that first experience back uh, uh, playing that game because that was just like astonishing how beautiful it was. And when you first dived into it, you're like, oh my God, you can go anywhere, do whatever you want. And it didn't really turn out like that at once you got uh, deeper into the game but the game definitely got cooler the deeper uh, you got into it but the story wasn't that uh, great uh, by any means at all it was uh, uh, it was like I said it was a pretty train it was a big train wreck the writing was bad um, uh, what is it <laughs> what is it I can't uh, I can't tell you why because I don't know why. God, I can't remember the line. I should have wrote it down, but uh, uh, I don't understand what I, I. I can't tell you what I don't understand. I don't know, but it was a. Uh, it was a uh, pretty. It was pretty funny. If you guys play Destiny, uh, you guys <laughs> know what I'm talking about. It'll it'll probably come back to me. Uh, but so with this game, uh, they released. Uh, expansion packs a few expansion packs with live events attached to those expansion packs to celebrate seasons like uh, winter and uh, halloween and uh celebrating destiny they also did a valentine's one uh and that lots of them were actually pretty cool and lots of them were uh pretty uh boring or at least they dumbed down some of them uh which was a kind of a bad idea because uh Especially Iron Banner was one of the big highlights, and now in Destiny 2, Iron Banner is not that big of a highlight anymore. Even though, uh, if you're listening right now live this week, uh, it is uh, faction rallies are up right now uh, live, so you guys can watch that. But let's dive into it because this is only a 30 minute podcast, and uh, that helps me keep uh, my uh, uh, blood <laughs> blood pressure low because all the stuff I'm doing, but. Let's talk about the dark below real quick and uh, how. Uh, so, the original Destiny, it was uh, bad, but uh, when the expansion came out, it uh, took the bad and made it into worse. I don't know how they did it, but uh, at least the story and they added a new character, the Tower. At least the story was kind of okay, uh, and. Uh, it was very short too. It was very short, and they brought another raid on top of the uh, raid they used to have, which was the Vault of Glass. And now we have Crota, the Crota raid, and that was a uh, really uh, difficult first going in, especially in the darkness at that first part uh, where you're running into the darkness and you have to guide your team. And for those who do not know what a raid is, a raid is a team-based. Uh, you have to get your own team together and it's a team based activity that requires everybody to participate everybody can concentrate everybody to listen because if you aren't listening the raid is just going to fall to pieces and they really messed up on uh, how the raid was because uh it made you uh it made you (laughs) god it was horrible it made you uh redo exotics all over again so like say like i had a gun and I leveled it up all the way. Well, guess what? You have to do that again using a different perk, using a different item to make that thing go up into a level again, which was a horrible, horrible system that they implemented. And uh, it uh, you had to re-get everything all over again, and it was just pointless, and it was frustrating, and... Uh, at least, at least the story was a little bit more entertaining uh, than, especially the ending. And then uh, after that, the House of Wolves came up, and it showed some light in that dark, <laughs> in the dark below. It showed some light. Uh, House of Wolves. Uh, it was better than anything that has came out in Destiny thus far. The story was the big, big selling point. It was. It was awesome. The story was super cool. It featured the Awoken. It, you got a new social space. Went to the hub, uh, to the new uh, hub, and uh, to the new public space where you could walk around and uh, go to the reef and talk to uh, a bunch of uh, fallen and Awoken. And uh, it was where the Queen was. And it was just cooler than anything else because they also it didn't have a raid though 
but that was it was I was perfectly fine without a raid because it had uh, Prison of Elders, which was another team based sometimes multiplayer where you could uh, just jump in by yourself and join people, and it was a uh, team based activity where you had to go through different doors and they'll lead to different sections. So it would lead to one would be Cabal, one would be uh, Hive, one would be Fallen, and one would be the Vex. In each area, after you kill a certain amount of enemies, you get uh, a boss you have to kill, essentially. Not all the time, but you have to do some activity to get to that. And uh, after that was where you had to kill Skolas. And uh, <laughs> he was pretty difficult to kill at the very beginning when everybody was trying and they didn't have anything to uh, level up with. And nothing to really work with and it was uh, it was <laughs> it was pretty hard uh, we had to come up with our own routine how to kill him now since we're overpowered essentially we can just go in there and be like two shot him and he's dead uh, not as fun when you're overpowered uh, yeah not as fun but less frustrating and more rewarding well a little bit rewarding uh, because it also depends on your level, how well uh, your rewards that you get uh, for engrams and weapons and gear and stuff like that. But Skolas was definitely a very, very cool character in uh, the Destiny uh, universe. And I like how his story unfolded. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, uh, spoil anything deeper than uh, just covering the base of the story and talking about it uh, because I know some people haven't played uh destiny or the games i might talk about in the future i uh, need to make a list of that but i'm not trying to spoil anything but hopefully you guys are interested in the games uh they i'm talking about but overall the house of wolves was a big uh change in direction so like they were going they went left they went left they went left even further they look they went 20 miles left and then they uh, inched back with the House of Wolves to the right a little bit, trying to uh, center it where they wanted it to be. And with the Tank and King, which is the which is essentially year two of the uh, Destiny universe, the Tank and King was the game changer. It changed the weapons, changed how guns were shot, how ammo was used, how uh, PvP was handled, multiplayer, online multiplayer, well, the whole game's online multiplayer, but it also changed PvP, uh, PvE, uh, made a huge story with a bunch of side missions, a bunch of missions, uh, core missions, a bunch of uh, new strikes, new maps, uh, new gear that we haven't seen before, uh, implementation, implementation of uh, using ghosts, you can use ghosts for the first time, uh, different types of ghosts, you can switch out your ghosts, uh, you can just overall uh, made Destiny better than it ever was, uh, think thank you for that <laughs> because uh, that need that was like the savior savior for uh, uh, destiny but overall uh, the Tank King is story is great there's a bunch of secrets you can go on the new space uh, new uh, uh, an arena I I don't want to say arena new uh, PVE space it's called the dreadnought it's on the uh, ring of Saturn Saturn I think and it, uh, they had a huge fight, this is in the trailer, they had a huge fight with the Awoken, and the Awoken was trying to stop the Taken King, which is, uh, uh, Crota's father, so he's coming back for revenge after killing, uh, Crota's father from the Dark Below raid, and, which was a really cool, uh, storyline, so he's back, and he's like, he's like, t seeking revenge, and he's like this, uh, giant, I don't know, this hive monster creature with wings, and it was super cool how they handled it, and everything about him, all the magic he used, and the swords, we could use swords for the first time, have swords on our character as a heavy spot, overall, it uh, made a huge change in uh, the Destiny universe, uh, the best thing so far, uh, there's a bunch of secrets in the Dreadnought, along with cool raids, uh, I mean, cool uh, strikes within the Dreadnought. And the raid, yeah, the raid is even. <laughs> that It was one of the hardest raids. Uh, one of the most confusing raids to beat. One of the hardest raids to beat. One of the most complex raids overall. Uh, it was just very, uh, very uh, confusing. And uh, once you got it, it was, it was 
something to smile about because uh, uh, anybody who completes a raid knows how hard it is and how much concentration they need because it is a six man team yes a six man team and you guys have to work together online together with sometimes even with random people work together to get these tasks done because a lot of people have trouble uh listening during the raid and making sure they actually know what to do because <laughs> some might say yeah i got this yeah yeah and after you explain the entire thing to them and they're like yeah i got it and then you do it and you end up failing a thousand countless hours away Jesus, eight hours I spent with one team, and we got nowhere. It was it was pretty sad. <laughs> but overall, yes, the Ten King was a game changer, and any highlights, every highlights all through it. Uh, the enemies were better, and they featured yeah they featured Taken, uh, which is a new enemy I forgot to mention, and it was it took <laughs> Taken it took uh, the enemies we already know. And they made them into. Sorry about the noise outside. Uh, and they made them into uh, Taken, which were like ghostly characters. And they would give them different abilities. So, like, one could uh, multiply. Once you shoot it, it could pop up another one. And once you shoot it again, it could pop up another one. Uh, they had different shields, they had different uh, tracking, uh, tracking bullets. And uh, yeah, it was overall uh, cooler. How they did that, I wish they would implement a different character, maybe a new enemy, uh, but uh, they're still focusing on the enemies they still have, and at least at least the enemy Taken gave it a different kind of twist to it. Uh, and then along came Sally. No, uh, Rise of Iron uh, came out, was the next one, after uh, quite some time... Uh, not that really. It was after the Ten King came out, and then a bunch of sub events came out, uh, like a Halloween event, SRL. We finally got to race sparrows. That was awesome. Uh, I like the way they did that, and uh, it was very different. And it was great during the holiday season to do that because I was just like at home with hot chocolate. I was like, who wants to race me in Destiny? Uh, because uh, everybody, that was more of a fan thing that the fans came up with, and. Uh, Destiny heard us. They heard us. Whoa. Uh, and uh, they implemented SRL uh, into it, uh, which is a Sparrow Racing League. Yeah, Sparrow Racing League. And that was a big thing that everybody was excited about. And uh, their merch on the Bungie.net store was uh, pretty fun. And they had, like, bicycle uh, uh, jackets on. Uh, <laughs> it was overall a great event. And then uh, after that, they came out with uh, a few more events like a uh, winter event uh, and uh, a Valentine's Day event, which they only did once, I believe. They only did that once, which kind of which kind of sucked a little bit. Uh, but again, it only lasted a week. It should have lasted two weeks, but uh, it only lasted a week. But overall, it was a it was a great event. But Rise of Iron, when that came out after this long wait. Uh, they came out with a poster, and the people were like, oh, that's fake. And I was like, that looks totally real to me. I mean, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but <laughs> it, it turned out it was uh, a real poster, as I suspected. I mean, I mean, who does... I mean, that's a great job in graphic design. I mean, they should be working at Bungie. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, they introduced a different type... I don't want to. I don't want to keep saying different type of enemy, because it's kind of like the same enemy... Uh, so it's the Fallen, but infused with SIVA, and they're kind of like pirates, I mean, the ones with, uh, with like a peg leg, and uh, it was uh, overall a pretty good, it was just, overall it was a pretty good, <laughs> it came out after the Tank King, but the Tank King was such a game changer that they didn't have to change so much in uh, Rise of Iron, and I think it was. Uh, I think it did good. It it did great. Uh, the story was very compelling with the Siva and the Iron Lords. So we had all these events called the Iron Banner, and uh, for since 2014 and 2016, I believe uh, 2016 is when uh, Rise of Iron came out, and we finally get to hear the story, the secret story behind the Rise of Iron and the Iron Lords, and uh, that was. Uh, 
pretty cool Lord Saladin, Lord Salad, and Lady Ephrodite uh, controlled the Iron Banner now. Now it's back to uh, Lord Saladin because they didn't really change that much. And they didn't really... I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, but we had a new social space and a new area to explore outside the walls of Destiny. So, like, uh, uh, there's this giant wall that's holding up Destiny uh, and keeping out the bad guys. But the wall is broken and... Uh, so the bad guys are in, and uh, uh, the wall got broken even. And the wall got broken even worse this time around, and more enemies came in, and Lord Saladin was at the forefront, protecting uh, the uh, the wall from uh, creatures and stuff, and so he called on our help, and we uh, helped him, and uh, yeah, it just it, and he taught us how to be an Iron Lord, and we became Iron lords ourselves which was <laughs> pretty funny you got this giant long sword uh with the iron banner uh etched on it and it was a uh, pretty pretty cool uh the story was great uh the raid was i didn't play this raid much uh but uh they had some secrets in it with like binary codes and stuff and i was like <laughs> when that came out last year uh i was actually learning binary and uh <laughs> it was funny because the day I learned binary, at a couple days after that, like two days or one day after that day, uh, I used the binary codes for the raid, uh, and I was like, "What? I just learned this. I can do this." And that was a <laughs> that was a pretty funny moment <laughs> there. Uh, but overall, the story was really good. Uh, the Iron Lords. Uh, uh, like uh, thought off the SIVA because the SIVA is like uh, a swarm of like think of a swarm of gnats uh, coming to you but kind of red and kind of uh, metal-y uh, maybe like robotic-y uh, and they uh, would enhance gear and stuff but uh, they actually turned out to be evil and would control people and uh, have a mind of its own and uh, would use them and uh, use them to uh, defeat their friends and uh, stuff like that and so uh, the fallen got a hold of it and now they're using it again and they're right they're uh, bringing back uh, weapons and creatures uh, from past strikes uh, to uh, uh, from the dead that we killed in old strikes and that was that was really that was a really cool uh transition from them and it was very interesting how uh they did it and how uh it was not as in depth as the Ten King, but uh there i think their school their story was a kind of more uh it was lighter it was lighter uh, instead of uh as the dark tones as the uh, Ten King, but overall it was a uh, a pretty uh uh pretty uh, yeah, pretty good story and pretty interesting uh, with the technology and uh, how they worked around everything. And uh, again, the raid with his secrets and uh, yeah, the binary secret was the hardest secret to crack uh, when first competing it. But uh, once you get it, uh, the room you go into and everything is uh, pretty, pretty fantastic. Uh, but overall, uh, Destiny as a whole it was an okay game. I'm not trying to rate it here. This is not that type of podcast, but uh, I'm not trying to rate it here. But if I would give it a rating, it would be around uh, a, a six or f- a seven, which is uh, not average. So, like a six or a seven would actually be pretty, uh, would actually be considered bad. Uh, but I wouldn't consider it that bad. Like, there's some pretty terrible games out there but uh uh you gotta love all games you gotta give every game a chance you know but uh this is uh basically the end of the podcast since it's only uh 30 minutes but i hope you guys enjoy it and you guys can always uh email me or comment down below in uh uh, if you watch this on youtube or uh give me a review on uh soundcloud or itunes or uh just go to head over to uh the uh student media center and uh give us a chat and tell me what you guys think about the podcast overall and uh tell me some tweaks i can give to it and uh yeah this is just uh this game this uh thursday afternoon games chat it's just a light uh, uh fun games chat uh that i just pick a game and just 
start talking about it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. In case you didn't know, I'm Dylan Lepore, and this is the Thursday Afternoon Games Chat. Each and every week, I come to give you an in-depth talk about the games I play and some history about them. The podcast airs live on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Radford on RadioFreeRadford.com. And then a week later, it's released on YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash Dylan Lepore and other podcasting services like SoundCloud and iTunes as a downloadable MP3. Thanks for watching, and it's been my pleasure serving you. Lead the way. Get your rock off my map. This is amazing! Let's do this.